well, tonight we have a really special uh, radio here to be talking about. Uh, it's not the new one on the top, or relatively new. It's not the older one on the bottom, but it's the middle. It's a uh, Roto Schwartz uh, EK56-4, which is the latest version of the of 56, which includes the FM module we see down here with the F3. That, that actually was an option, but they included it in the final. This particular radio was made between 1972 and 1975, and I guess this is probably the first million dollar radio I've ever, uh, I've ever uh, <laughs> reviewed. So, uh, the reason I say that is because uh, according to Fred Osterman's book, it cost 47,000 Dutch marks when it was new. Um, that, doing the math on that, uh, the dollar amount in 1972 for that would have been 153,831. Dollars and in 2025 dollars that would have expanded out uh, based on a, on an exchange rate of one to seven fifty five one dot one dollar equals seven dollars fifty five cents. That's the inflation between uh, 1972 and 1970 and 19, and 2025. That'd be one point one six million, uh, slightly above that a little bit, but one point one six million for this particular radio per unit. <laughs> so you can see it's probably one of the most expensive radios I've ever worked on. They are not work that now, of course, but uh, back when they were originally new, they were state-of-the-art, and uh, because of the German military contracts they were used, uh, it was a number of different things they, they actually were using that. This radio has, um, you know, you can see the controls, loudspeaker, and this is the speaker here, and then V-meter. This is something I'll talk about in a minute. It's the tuning mechanism. That's actually very cool. And this is uh, automatic fine-tuning. Um, so, uh, I haven't found a whole lot of use for that yet, particularly because this part is digital, this part's analog. Um, headphones and jacks here. This is the volume knob or AF gain. This is the on off switch, uh, two positions. You can do it, open it either way. Um, this is the, uh, noise blanker and this is the 20 filter options. Uh, built into this particular unit. You can see they go from 75 hertz all the way up to 8, kil eight megahertz. Um, so that's a, a pretty broad range. And for 1972, that was unheard of. So that's a, that's all done mechanically. So it's a pretty complex machine. You have the BFO on top there, and uh, then you have your AGC, what we call it, or uh, control, they call it, uh, master gain control. You can do it in the position here is master gain control where it's basically what you get with the gain control um, but if you use it in the 50 db or 5 db that's uh fast or, or slow or medium if you want to call it that uh, uh agc that's what they call it today you have your rf gain here so you can actually do that and then you have down here the different mode selections and as i said earlier this one has it has the F3, which is a, a, a nomenclature for an FM. Um, then you have uh, a, a, A1 is, is CW, and you have a, just regular raw A1 and A1 plus filters. That actually gives you a little bit more control about the bandwidth. And then you have um, tuning, which is kind of like a generic. I don't even know exactly what that is, but I don't use it. I use the A3 mostly when I'm doing voice. That's That's what that's for. Also for FSK, but I haven't tried that. Um, and then you have upper and lower sideband in here. So, um, and of course, then you have the tuning mechanisms here. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and turn her on. All right, we'll just flip her on. Yeah. What is your husband hunt with that? Camera? All right, now to turn that down. Uh, the tuning on this is this is the megahertz, kilohertz which basically equipped to this. This one goes to these two. And then you have analog um, after this. It displays it as, as digital here, but that is, this is the actually, anything, anything below 100, hertz, 100, megahertz, 100 kilohertz is analog in this machine, which is really kind of wild and strange. I've never had it before. Um, as you can see, you tune this, and it goes up like that. You see that this is what it's, this is what this is measuring. Um, and of course, the four would be, uh, so you can do it that way. 
Also, there's a fine tuning where you have an outer ring here that you use. It gives you more fine tuning than that. So you can actually put it right on the frequency if you want to, a little easier. Because the, the other wheel will give you, will spin past them most of the time. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, it sounds pretty good. This is a Zero Radio in Toronto. I do a lot of those. Um, the guy who did originally what this looked like looked like this. <laughs> that that is the original, and it had uh, you see where the on the other side here it's it's actually pretty it was the same, but inside originally there was a mechanism like this, which gave you the kilohertz and you know the numbers there. Now, what that looked like behind the scenes is kind of, you know, you had a lot of squeals and gears and everything else. That was a state of the art. Um, this is a, mod a modular design of this radio. There are a bunch of different modules in the back. Everything's encapsulated and shielded, uh, double shielded. So it's, it's bulletproof pretty much. Uh, the power supply is up behind the speaker here. I actually had to have this particular radio uh, power supply recapped because it was... Um, it was it wouldn't have turned on. Also, I had to have the switch worked on because some of the grease that they used in there had actually dried out and caked, and we're not making good contact. So, I had my tech uh, go through and Greg go through and do that, and also recap the power supply, and work on one of the modules in there that had a piece of debris that was causing it not to tune properly. So, but it's in tip shop shape now, basically as good as new, um, and uh, I appreciate Greg doing that for me. Um, so, how do we use this thing? <laughs> well, if we're going to tune, okay, let's see if I want to go up to 1500, I would go here, okay, get that to the one, the, and then here, I'd have to drop that down and figure out which 500 kilohertz range. Uh, that's, I'm going to have to go down more, looks like, right? And there's 1500 right there. And I'm at the end of zero right there, so it won't turn any past that as much. So you can talk, yes, that's how you do that in tuning up. So if I was going to go to, this thing actually has a really good low for you know, LF. Um, I'm going to go down to some of my, uh, let's see, go down some more. Then we can go up to 330. There's actually one of these uh, directional beacons. Now we get a siren going off, so that's good. <laughs> I can't hear that. Eye. I'll open it back up. There's my 330, and if we use the VFO, um, might have to be a CW move for that. It needs a wider aperture than that. That's the one out of Tennessee. I go up to four. Come on. Three thirty-three is another one out of McAllen, Texas. I believe that's what that is. So yeah, it does a pretty good job getting a low, low, low uh, LF. So if we go up to something useful here, um, I don't know if 50, 50 is up yet. That's in AM. All right. That's right up yet. 
the smooth the tuning on this is just as smooth as glass. It's really fun. See, you get to the end, it stops. That's kind of it, the uh, the tuning reminds me of a Drake R7 R8 R7A um, because you get to the certain range, particular ranges. Sometimes there's pretty good music on here. Sometimes you get the, the religious station. So let's see if this will go to. Let's see if I can get WWV. There she is. This is uh, local time here. It's uh, 22.15, uh, 10.15 local time here, Eastern. And so this is getting to be a little bit on the high side for being able to tune because of the propagation. But uh, as you can see, uh, the this receiver is um, pretty neat. Um, uh, historically, this fits between the uh, old... Uh, this particular model down here on the bottom. This one's the Siemens version of the EK, the Orange Roden Schwartz EK49. But this is the Sh Siemens E403. Um, and then, of course, the next one up, many of you know about, is the EK07, 070, sorry, uh, the <laughs> EK070 um, from Roden Schwartz. So many of you might have those in your collection. But anyway, this guy right here kind of sits in the middle of that, 72 to 75. First million dollar radio I've ever, um, I've actually ever reviewed. Um, the guy who did, let me just give you a little bit more about the guy who did this. The guy who did this, um, who was guy, kind of like the expert dude when it came to uh, repairing and innovating on the the 56s, um, was a guy named, uh, is a guy named Ulrich Niebuhr, uh, Niebuhr. Uh, he's in Germany, obviously, and he actually uh, designed this particular uh, interface to actually make it so that you could actually have that. Before it was all analog, like we saw with the, the wheels and the gears and all that. He also went in and actually uh, replaced LEDs for all the uh, for the for the bulbs that were in there, so they will last forever and they are much brighter. And he lights up like a Christmas tree, and it's beautiful. Um, and he also did an FM con uh, a, a converter. Um, so let me put that in here too. This is one of the few that he actually did that uh, there weren't that many of these done. Um, so you're probably not going to see many of these around. Um, but it's a, it's a super sweet machine. I mean, I, I, I like just the sound of this particular radio. Um, the internal speaker here is like a two by six or two by five. So it's a, it actually has a nice, decent sized speaker in it. And, uh, it, it, it shows this is a, this no no expense was spared on this back in 1972 when it first rolled out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. If you have any suggestions about radios you'd like to see, let me know. I have a number of other ones um, got in the queue. I'm ready to do so. I've been kind of taking a little break from it for a while, but uh, I'm back doing it. And uh, anyway, have a good night. I'll talk to you later.